What makes a good manga book cover? The answer can be a little subjective, but in my opinion, there are a couple tiny objective things that I feel a good manga volume cover should have, at the very least. Some of these principles would apply to most covers for anything. Album cover, video game covers, the list goes on. They say don't judge a book by its cover, but... You know. You want a manga volume cover that makes somebody pick it up, makes them want to buy it, that sells what the series is about, that sells the vibe. And usually to get those across, there'd be a certain amount of goals you want the manga volume cover to hit. The points you want to get across. Does the cover encompass the essence of that manga? Does it give off the intended vibe? Does it convey what genre the potential customer will be diving into? Shonen, shoujo, jose, action, adventure, comedy, gag, slice of life, psychological, horror, drama, mystery, thriller, supernatural, fantasy, combination of those. The list goes on. If there are characters on this cover, what vibes and energy are exuding from this character? Is it a character that comes across as likable, interesting, the character design, the color of the cover? All of these things play a role. The manga cover should grab the potential customer's attention in interesting and honest ways. The artist is trying to find an interesting way to tell you what the series is about and make you want to pick the book up. Especially in a world of very interesting, good looking covers, talented artists from all over the world. When placed with other books in that store, you are competing. Book cover, even the spine. From a less artsy, more business standpoint, there are some objective things that the book cover should do. Giving off information about the publisher, the creator, art, story, all the necessary key players putting that book together. Sometimes more so highlighting the key player who can draw more attention to the book. So certain creators with more pull, more legitimacy, more trust from readers would be the name that's highlighted more. In some cases, even more so than the actual title of the book. Because from a business standpoint, you're trying to sell the book. From all standpoints, you're trying to sell the book, but especially from that standpoint. And the honesty part I talked about is, to some degree, you should be able to tell the audience or reader or somebody picking this up what the series is about with just some of the visuals. That's extra if you have like maybe the synopsis of the story at the back of the book and stuff like that. But just looking at that cover, they should get the correct, more accurate energy that they're going to find when they open the book. But you get them to open the book, there's some victories there. The goal is to wow them, get them to pick it up, buy it, keep it, tell their friends about it. You look at Demon Slayer manga volume one cover and you get the energy of Tanjiro trying to protect his sister. Get some samurai swords, so you know you're going to get some samurai stuff in there. Some fangs, so you know there's going to be some supernatural mumbo jumbo in there as well. And if you're into all that stuff, you're probably going to pick it up. Obviously, if you like the art style, that's a bonus. You like the title, that's a bonus. You like how the book is designed from a graphic design standpoint, bonus, 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 bonus. A lot of creators, regardless of what you're creating, have to think very deeply about the manga volume covers, especially when starting out because you're new and you're going to be competing with already established titles out there where people are, in some cases, going to pick up the volume regardless of what the cover is. If Attack on Titan comes up with a blank cover, people are probably going to pick it up. Probably even stand out more than everything else because it's blank. But if you're a new title, it's extra hard. And that's why we put our best foot forward with our new books from our book deal with Quarto to make sure all the volume covers looked sleek. There's a uniformity to them. The art was created by the respective creators, but the design of the book was put together by our design team, while the design and certain business decisions were put together by us. Saturday AM, led by our lead designer, Mitch Proctor. Today is a monumental day. It also has a Sentai series that will be joining the book line called Henshin that's published and serialized in Saturday Brunch. And we went for a more minimalistic, sleek, contemporary approach. You do tend to find that with a lot of volume one covers where the main character is the focus of the cover. They want to make sure you get the character, the series title, and the necessary information. Boom, you're done. Sometimes it's not just a blank white. It might be filled in with a different flat color or adding some texture over it, but it's still overall simplified and having you focus on the main character, usually for volume ones. And just looking at that, you can tell that the point is to make sure you get the character, you get the vibe of the character, you're still getting some information about what kind of series this is going to be, as well as getting the key information about the title of the series and necessary information about the creator and publisher and all that stuff. Bleach, Naruto, Jujutsu Kaisen, and so on. Sometimes some of these approaches are taken into chapter covers, but obviously chapter covers are dealing with much less, so less so overall. Sometimes chapter covers completely do their own thing. It depends on the artist 
in what kind of creator you are. That's why I said, ultimately, there aren't really any rules. The simplistic main character driven approach is what I did with Apple Black as well. I even did it with the previous version that had a more independent approach to the publishing, but obviously I wanted something more energetic, more dynamic with this one because this book needs to work. Based off of the book deal, these versions of our books are the ones that are gonna be translated in bookstores, available worldwide, more traditional book size, some colored pages, higher quality print, refined remix, remastered art and grammar, exclusive content, all our books are going to have a post credit scene, some of which will tease a Saturday multiverse where all our characters come together to fight a common evil. Lots of interesting and innovative things we want to do with these books, some of which are even interactive, will be inspired by things we've seen from Japan, as well as stuff that we're getting from the West here with Marvel, DC, Image, the list goes on. With all the cool stuff you still have to nail. The cover. As you can see, very character driven, logo clear and concise, Sad Day and Presents, uniform, same as I like the Marvel Presents thing at the top, like the little Marvel logo. Author information at the bottom, unique ways of how we're showing like the volume number on the book. So even though we have all those things present on the books, they're not always placed in the same way and they're not always the same font. Even though it's having that uniform vibe, there's still things about the cover from a design perspective that have it be unique to the respective series. Now, obviously, not all manga covers do this. There's some manga covers that have a border there's some manga covers that kind of fill with a flat color maybe a flat color and the filter sometimes a flat color and the filter and the border sometimes they use all of the space for like an illustration maybe they're illustrating the scene might be abstract with a bunch of heads showcasing a bunch of the characters maybe driving interest to make readers look at these characters and want to learn more about them. Depending on the artist, they find what works best for their series and their approach and they're usually consistent throughout. In some cases, some artists have the liberties to kind of change and experiment over time. The Berserk covers started one way and then over time they evolved. So evolution is allowed. And even going back to the character driven stuff, you can still find ways to have all these versions of doing these covers still be character driven based off of the contents of that book, based off of what you want to give off when somebody picks it up. Even the ones with borders, sometimes the characters kind of pop out of the borders, actually making the book more dynamic, even though it's kind of confined extra. You can look at the One Piece covers and still get the vibe of of this crazy pirate going on a bunch of adventures, crazy looking characters, this weathered texture in the back that looks like a treasure map type thing going on, but it's still character driven in some ways. Some creators might have a lot of stuff going on on the cover and you're more likely to get away with all that regardless of how easy or hard to read the cover is. I mean, it's one piece, so someone's still gonna pick up the book. Almost like they've done all the hard work in the early stages so they have a lot of trust in capital to spend. And even those chaotic covers can still convey everything the author wants. Maybe the inside content is chaotic for that particular volume. And despite how chaotic it is, it still gives off the right amount of energy and synergy with everything that's going on. And in some cases, maybe it's chaotic for other reasons that are more in tune with the theme of the series. It's having a sense of horror vacui, the fear or dislike of leaving empty spaces, especially in an artistic composition, basically filling up the entire space. Horror vacui is a thing that has existed since the beginning of time when it comes to putting together compositions for illustrations, paintings, sculpture, the list goes on. There are creators that go the extra mile and have a lot of fun with their covers and the covers can actually be like an Easter egg, i.e. look at this One Punch Man cover by Yusuke Murata. It was essentially one big illustration when you put all these covers together. Sometimes creators do this with the spine of the book and you know these are things that can just be fun for a collection, especially the One Punch Man covers. If you go to the back of a couple of them, even the the way the cover kind of spreads out if you open the book wide. Murata kind of plays with a sense of depth with that, which is interesting and it's always gorgeous to look at. See this one here with an aquarium, you see one here at the edge of a building, like all of them look stellar. Art itself is crucial. This is one of the places where it's not like an art and story, the art is what's selling it here. At the very least for the person that's just seeing it for the first time. And honestly, this Easter eggy kind of approach to doing volume covers, maybe I might evolve to do this at some point, maybe for the next arc of the series, I might try to do something where the volumes for that arc kind of tie together in some interesting way, which I think would be fun. Ultimately, it all boils down to having a method to your madness. Some sense of consistency, leaving room for evolution, and change, and then fun. Just be able to justify the decisions that you're making. If you look at the One Punch Man covers, especially early on, he always made sure to include Saitama in the covers in some way. Even though he wanted to experiment and maybe showcase all these other characters, having people look at those covers, be interested in who those characters are, and maybe wanting to learn more. Bleach does that a lot. But with One Punch Man, Murata kind of 
throws in Saitama, even if it's just a little bit, it kind of makes everything comedic, despite this really cool dynamic action pose going on, which essentially is One Punch Man. It's all this crazy dynamic action, but there's this weird, quirky humor that works. And sure, if your cover is still kind of weird looking and you're lucky enough to have it still be a successful book, there are variant covers where in some cases a different artist draws it. Maybe they're joining three volumes together or they're re-releasing a previous volume and they just want a new cover that refresh things. Same way this Apple Black Volume 1 is a different Apple Black because the content as well is a little bit remastered and some of the scenes are actually going to be moved around, especially with future volumes. Well, you can say it's somewhat of a variant cover. And I did my best to make sure that this cover blew the last cover out of the water. If these books do really well, not just Apple Black, but all the other ones, please get Oblivion Roots, Aigami, Hammer, Titan King, Massively Multiplayer, World of Ghosts. Success here are the things that will determine Sad they am doing really big things and expanding in the future, playing in spaces that are only occupied or mostly occupied by the big boys. In the end, creating more of an avenue and alternative and options for other creators who want to be manga artists in this space. Obviously, there are other design principle things to worry about that I can't cover in one video. Things like color. Certain colors mean certain things, so you want to be very selective with what you actually pick. Sometimes, depending on the chart you're looking at, certain colors mean certain things, so you may want to use them in creative ways, some more than others, to help maybe more of what red means versus what black means, but you want to use both. Uh, which one you use more depends on what vibe you want to give off. Certain colors exude certain energy, so you want to do the research on that. And then all the stuff about character design and conceptual design and concept work and all of that, which I have several videos that cover, you can go check those out. But they all play a role in putting your cover together. And there's still more composition shapes. Let's hear from the creator of Oblivion Rouge, Pop Sule, and some of the stuff that went down when putting together his cover. Hello, it's Pop Sule, the creator of Oblivion Rouge, published on Saturday AM in the PM section. Came up with this idea of having all the characters in the image that are part of the initiation arc. Well, I sort of ran with this idea based on an image that I'd made a little bit ago, but I changed the composition and made it into this triangular composition where the lines directed towards the center where Umi would be standing. And so that's how I started. But once we sort of moved towards actually looking at what would happen if we added the logos and everything, we ran into the issue that the characters were too high. And so what I had to do was rethink the triangular composition in the beginning was like this. And so instead I, I flipped the triangle and made it more of like a pyramid. And Umi would remain central, but all the characters would sort of trickle down on both sides of her, um, which allowed for more space with the logos and just like made it all work out in a, in, a, in a way without having to do too much because all I did really was cut out a couple characters, rearrange them, and it made it a lot simpler a lot easier. So you, it's, it's not always just drawing everything all over again. It's also important to, to look what you have, look at what you got and just work with it. But then that's the art side. And I think what makes a good manga cover is something that is able to accomplish that. And then also able to accomplish more on the, I guess, businessy side is a success when it does its job. And its job is to have people pick it up, open it, read it, keep it, buy it, tell their friends about it, list goes on. Manga volume cover is successful when you have a list of goals that it needs to achieve and it hits them out of the park. Or just slap something popular on the cover, like your most popular characters in nine times out of 10, that probably do the trick too. For the Apple Black cover, you see the main character, you see the focus there, and then you see this kind of super dynamic pose with this arm that clearly tells you that this is gonna be like a fantasy story and the arm is gonna be special in some way, therefore making the character even a little more special, maybe versus all the other characters. The arm is glowing, has the symbol on it, giving off certain energies. The character's leaping at you, somewhat popping out of the cover. You can even see his hair over the logo a little bit. The logo is a variation, sometimes when the logo is blue, red, orange, sometimes where the apple is above the black. In most cases, your series should have either one version that's a one size fits all without any issues. You can look at one piece books and you see the one piece logo, which looks great, but then you have to have a different version for the spine. As you would know, this is slightly different, even though it's giving off a similar energy to the original. There's a nice blend of art and design happening on this cover. Nice gradient at the back, 
really helping a lot of the lights pop. Even the way the one is written, it's glowing like the impulse energy is emitting from Sano's Erotus arm, essentially the arm of a god. Enzo is Tired has a good video that explores a whole lot more on manga covers, so you can go check that video out. So hopefully this video helped you, especially if you're one seeking to get your manga out and create a manga volume cover for it, or just a manga cover in general. And hopefully you enjoy the visuals of me putting it together. Some artists go digital, some artists go traditional, some artists go mixed media like I did, where I use my alcohol brush markers to put the illustration together after sketching and inking with Sakura Micron inking pens, and then scanned it in digitally and did some touching up here and there. Send it over to Mitch, Mitch did the rest. And it also went through phases. In fact, it was a different version of this cover, but this is the one we went with. For the love of Gojo, like the video, only go smash the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications so you can get more of these videos. Basically documenting some of the gems that we had to deal with putting these books together. Follow me on Twitch, where I've been doing a lot of streams, working on manga pages, even manga pages that happened in volume four. Follow me on all my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, the list goes on. Please check out the books. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description, including a link to where you can pre-order translated version. Everyone who pre-orders the books also gets exclusive trading cards, some rarer than others, filled with characters from our Saturday multiverse. All is a way to give back love because the pre-orders matter a lot. Don't want to go into all the business stuff, but these play a role in how the books actually get into bookstores and all those kind of things and how many of the books are going to be in there and so on and so forth. You want to truly build something like Shonen Jump here in the West, this is it. Manga, anime, video games, toys, all of that starts with the success of all these books. What's your favorite cover from the book line? Check out more videos. It's White Manga, Audi 9000.